What's up guys, Matt here from the American Edge. Today I'm gonna to show you how I recover a knife that is very dull. All right, so I just got these in, uh, and this is the one I'm gonna work on with you today. So as you can see, bust the tip. So I'm gonna spend a little time bringing that tip back, uh, and also try to show you like the uh, all the bright spots around the edge. Like this is, this is a, a very dull knife. So historically what I did is spend quite a bit of time on the Edge Pro with a, a low grit stone trying to bring that back and that takes quite a bit of time. So I've figured out a way to really move that process along and I want to show that to you. Uh, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to draw with some Sharpie uh, what I want my new profile to look like. So let me do that and I'm going to do it on both sides. I'll show you uh, what I come out with after that. Okay, so I just took a little Sharpie and drew that in. So that's what I want that new profile to look like. Did it on both sides. I'm not going nuts here, but I want that whole spot colored in. I'm going to put this on a grinding wheel to take that um, all the Sharpie off. So just to step through what my process is going to be, I'm going to mark this as you see. I'm going to take off the majority of that metal on a grinding wheel. And then I'm going to finish refining uh, and cutting a new bevel. A new bevel, sorry, uh, cutting a new bevel on a um, belt sander. And then I'm going to show you a a file that I have adapted for the Edge Pro. That's going to uh, make the edge consistent along the whole length of it. And then I'm ready to jump in with my Edge Pro stones and um, and finish the knife. So. Uh, now that this is drawn, the next step is I'm going to remove the majority of that material with a uh, bench grinder. Right, so this is the bench grinder in my shop. I have a fine wheel over here. This is an 8-inch delta, and then I have a wire brush on this side. Uh, I replaced the coarse wheel with this wire brush, and that gets a lot of use, especially with the yard tools and stuff that come in, and even some high-carbon knives. Like Getting the rust off pretty quick is good. I like I use that wheel quite a bit now. I actually rarely use this side anymore, but for getting off as much material as I am on this knife, I want to do that so I don't wear out my belt so much, which I'll show you next. The other thing is I have dust collection set up on my belt sander, but not on my bench grinder. So I'm gonna just put on my respirator and glasses and uh, it won't be much, but it'll, it'll make me feel good about it. All right, so let's take a look here. Um, I find that after you do this, you you know, life barely notice that there's even any uh, modifications made to the blade. That came out good. Couple of things to point out: if uh, the bench grinder is uh, kind of sketchy to use because if you if you heat up the steel too much, like if you heat it so up so much that you can't touch it, you really run the risk of changing the temper of the steel and effectively ruining the steel. So um, that's why you just go real low and slow, low pressure, slow passes or fast passes. Anyway, take the metal off slow. If it gets so hot that you can't touch it, then slow down. Um, and the other thing is, as you're cutting a bevel, um, you probably can't see it. You want the, as you probably know, you want the edge of the knife to be centered between either face of the blade. So that means taking off material on either side respectively so that you keep the edge in the center. Uh, each bevel should be about the same size. But anyway, now that blade shape is about the way I want it. I have a tip restored on here. The next thing I'm going to do is take this to the belt sander and just take a couple passes down either side to cut a fresh bevel. And what I can do, I'll try to show you while I'm doing it, uh, I can look at pretty much look at it and I can tell if I see bright spots then I haven't formed an edge yet um, and I also have a magnifying glass uh, on by my belt sander so I might just look under that real quick the thing is uh, I won't be able to narrate as I go because I have a vacuum as a dust collector and the sander so it's kind of loud so uh, just watch for that and I will uh, 
catch up with you after we cut a new bevel on this knife. Oh, bear in mind too, generally this takes like one or two passes on a belt sander. Like it's incredibly fast. And the same thing applies, you gotta go real slow. Like if you can't go heating up the steel or you're gonna ruin the blade. So uh, even that um, is, uh, even going with low pressure, it still cuts steel off pretty quick, so you got to be careful. Uh, the last thing is, uh, maybe I'll try to show you when I set it up, but I set it against the belt. I try to, I'm going to do this blade at 21 degrees, so I'm going to try to hold the blade at 21 degrees to the belt. That takes a little bit of practice. For this step after this, you'll see that it doesn't matter a whole lot, but getting it close is good. Closest is better. All right, let's do that. All right, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I just want to show you, like, I have this magnifying glass set up over here. And what I can look for real quick under here is a burr. Like, I do see a burr there. Um, I got a couple nicks over here, so we're going to have to keep cutting this edge back, uh, get these nicks out. And um, and then looking at it this way, once once all those bright spots go away, that's how I know that I have an edge. So I can... Yeah, I just took uh, two passes on either side, and we're almost there. Uh, this is the step that, without this sander, uh, would take a long time sawn away with a stone. All right, so let's finish it up. All right, just some closing thoughts on this belt sander. This is a one by 30, so one inch by 30 inch belt made by Grizzly. I have a 240 uh, grit belt on here right now. I it has this other flat sand over here. Uh, I don't, I haven't used that, but uh, this is, is invaluable to me. What I really like about it over a bench grinder is that uh, I have a flat, platen here which allows me to set a knife up and have more control over the angle as opposed to cutting on a round wheel. Uh, I can also swip, swap this belt out pretty easily and I haven't really had the need to do that but I do have some coarser belts and some finer belts that I can put on here. Uh, dust collection is nice so it sucks all of the uh, everything off the knife down here. Um, oh yeah and then so I, I bought this from Grizzly it's probably like I don't know, buck twenty or something like that. Uh, there is one on Harbor Freight for sixty bucks. I haven't heard anything bad about it. Uh, and then if you really wanted to, I don't know, I don't know if the Rikon is the top of the line, but you could spend a little bit more than a Grizzly on a Rikon to get the same thing. Um, okay, uh, sweet tool. I really like this. Okay, so now onto the step, like really why I wanted to do this video was to show you this because I've never seen anyone do this and I found them to be very valuable and I have a few of them, so much so that I made them available in my online shop at 
americanedgesharpening.com. But what I've done here, this is a experiment of a bunch of files that have been cut to fit in the Edge Pro arm. So the ones, so I'll just tell you kind of the progression here. Uh, everything on this side, these three are all like typical hardware store files, uh, maybe a 10, a 10 and eight inch mill uh, flat. Uh, anyway, I did, I did a whole bunch of different files here to figure out what I liked. Uh, these were good, but I found that they didn't last very long. The the knives, the steel on the knives is harder than uh, these files, so they they stopped cutting relatively quickly. And I kind of gave up on the whole process until I learned about files specifically made for stainless steel. So I sourced these, and these are actually three different grits. There's a, a fine, a medium, and a coarse. Uh, these are awesome. Like, I actually only use a fine... A cage of the medium, very rarely the coarse, uh, but these are awesome. So what I'm going to show you is I, I'm going to put this in the Edge Pro, put this knife in there, and really one pass along here, one pass along there, and now I've got a bevel, and uh, the edge is the same, the, the bevel is the same across the whole length of the knife, um, and I'm at the point where I can go right from here into my stones, and that has been the progression of so much savings and time on bringing a knife back that is in such bad shape. Um, so anyway, I really wanted to show you that. And uh, I will say that these aren't, these aren't a magic bullet. Um, they work really well, but I've still found that uh, this is a, like, a, I think this was an eight inch file. Anyway, this one still cuts real good on garden tools like uh, pruners and loppers. Uh, I'm holding on to these in case the machetes come across my bench. Like, I feel like this monstrosity would do a real nice job at reprofiling a machete for me uh, just to get the edge back so I can put stones on it. So anyway, these, um, these have saved me a bunch of energy on knives that are just really in, in rough shape. Okay, so let me uh, stop talking and show you. Okay, so a typical setup here. I'm going to do these at 21 degrees, which I'm set at. This uh, this is the fine. No, nope, that was the fine file. These cut in one direction only. I think that's the right one. Oh, let me. Uh, if you haven't seeing these stop collars yet. You definitely got to check these out. Sweet. All right. So pull stroke only off the blade coming back. So if my angle, if my angle on the belt sander was off a little bit, this is what's this is what's making that angle constant across the whole bevel. The other thing is I don't like to work the tip too much on the belt sander because it uh, it can heat up a lot. So this is a nice way to uh, get that edge right at the tip. Still needs a little work, but let me make a pass down this side. I'm going to have to move you to work that tip, but yeah, like there's a legit bevel, man. If you've done this before, you know, like when you get a tough knife, like to get, a, get your burr, I mean in one pass like oh my god all right i gotta i gotta move you to bring that tip back i'll be right back
All right, I almost did this step without even showing you, but what I like to do with these files now, I got this, this is called a file card. This side is uh, a little wire brush and that's for uh, heavier, coarser files. This side is some stiff nylon bristles. Uh, but these, these files are nice, like they don't get gummed up, but I still like to just clean them off before I put them back. Oh, the other thing which I want to show you is if you decide you want to try this out, I've, I've cut a, um, a bevel on, um, sorry, a chamfer on each side of these so that they'll fit nicely in the Edge Pro. Uh, but what that means is you're only cutting on one side. So if it does wear down, and actually this one hasn't yet, which it kind of blows my mind after working with these other ones, uh, but you can just put this back on a bench grinder and re-chamfer uh, this and then you I mean you essentially get two in one, right? Okay, so if you want to check those out um, Oh, and I guess just to I'm not going to show you the, the rest of the process here It's just uh, like I've got a burr built. It'll, it's building on either side. I've checked it down both sides Built it in one pass with the stone after bringing the edge back on a belt sander and now I'm just going to step through my uh, diamond matrix stones from edge pro and I'm going to finish this knife at the 1100 grit diamond matrix stone. And it's going to be sharper than it has ever been. And I think that that looks good, right? Reprofiled there at the tip. I don't think if you pick this up, you'd probably never know that, uh, that that tip had broken off. Okay. Uh, so check these out. AmericanEdgeSharpening.com. Go to the shop. Look for... I think I called it like the Rapid Edge Profiler. If you don't have the, um, you know, the bench grinder or belt sander and you want to spend, I think I got them at 20 bucks uh, just to get started. Like you're going to save time with these things, I swear. Um, okay, so. Oh, the other thing is I only have the fine stainless steel file listed up there. If you're interested in something else, just shoot me an email. You can find my contact information on my page and I'd be happy to cut a... Uh, a coarse one for you, or a medium one, or even any of the, uh, like a, a standard steel file. Or, uh, again, I found these, this, this one works particularly good on garden tools. So, um, and I'll also just, you know, tell you too, like this doesn't cut all steels the same. Like, so, um, again, not a silver bullet, but this has saved me a lot of time. I invite you to check it out. AmericanEdgeSharpening.com.